Hey everybody, it's Steph Mischuk with KillerSites.com and KillerPHP.com. In this video blog, I want to tell you a story uh, about uh, one of the most ridiculous stories, rather, that uh, you'll probably ever hear about programming or web design. And it's something that happened to me uh, many years ago. And um, there's, a, there's a couple of, I think, really important lessons uh, in this story, so uh, bear with me for about two two minutes here, well, a minute, and uh, you'll understand why. So, let's go back, uh, I guess, uh, to about 1998, 1999, way back, and maybe even before that. Anyhow, so I was approached by a company who had built a, basically an, uh, a very early social networking type of system. It wasn't really social networking, but anyway, it was a piece of web software. And they had hired a company to build it before me. And after a year, it still didn't work properly. So they, in frustration, they decided to find another web uh, developer to see if they could uh, fix it and get it, get it working. So they called me in. I came in and took a look at the uh, software. And uh, I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> and uh, so I went in and I looked at the software. And I found that it was written in a language called Perl. Now, just in case you don't know, Perl is uh, one of the older languages out there. And it was actually a, a language used a lot of times on ser Unix server systems. And uh, it was adapted uh, to become a, a web programming language. And Perl was one of the original languages used to create dynamic websites. It's kind of old. Uh, so if you're if you're if you're interested all of a sudden in Perl, don't be because all the advantages of Perl can be found in in PHP, and Ruby, and Java, and there's a lot of disadvantages to Perl. But I don't want to get into language war. So Perl is an old language, so don't worry about it. Anyhow, so it was written in Perl, and one of the problems with Perl is that it's very very um, terse. And what do I mean by terse? Meaning very compact very difficult to read. So, you know, one of the jokes in the Perl community even was that if you're, you know, a Perl pro, I forget the deed, I forget the exact quote, but basically if, if Perl programmers, you write some, something in Perl and six months later, you know, not even three months later, looking back at your own code, it would be a disaster to try to figure out what was going on. And it was just the nature of the language at the time. Since then, things have matured in the Perl community. I know they have oh, oh, object-oriented Perl, as far as I understand, and so on. But anyway, I don't. that's not the point of this story. So I looked at the code base, and it was done in Perl. It was a bloody mess. So I said, forget it. I, said, I told the client, I said, listen, we should just redo this from scratch, and we'll be able to do, I'll be able to do it in 30 days. They're, and they were pretty surprised by this, because the Perl version, they had been working on it for a year, and it still didn't work. And I was able to save 30 days and, uh, because I, I was going to build it using a much more modern language or environment at the time, something called ASP. Today we call it uh, ASP Classic, this is Active Server Pages, which was Microsoft's first uh, dynamic web page technology. And again, ASP is not a language, it's, a, it's an infrastructure. And at the time, you would code ASP typically with VB script or JavaScript, although the vast majority of people would use VBScript. Anyhow, uh, despite all the shortcomings that ASP has, uh, and especially compared to today, you wouldn't you want to use ASP today, it's very old school. Um, it was light years ahead of Perl in many respects. So I was, so I got, I got the gig, I got the contract, and indeed I was able to uh, rebuild their thing from scratch using ASP, uh, and I got it done in 30 days and it worked fine. And it's not a testament to uh, me being a great coder. I'm okay, I, I, can, I know my stuff, but I'm not some genius coder or anything. It's just, you know, here's the first rule to take away. It's just that certain languages are far more productive in certain circumstances. And in this case, Perl, because it wasn't designed from the get-go to be a web uh, dynamic web uh, language, it, it was sort of tacked on afterwards. Um, you saw that, that you, you saw those, um, that 
you know, this continuity, if you will, within the language. That's why it wasn't so efficient at writing code compared to a pure web programming dedicated environment like ASP. So anyway, so I produced the language, I pro excuse me, I produced the product with ASP and everything was, was fine. Now here is where this story gets really ridiculous. So uh, a few months later, I get a call from the client and he says, and they asked me to, if I would see their lawyer because they were being sued now by the previous um, contractor, the previous company rather, who had built the software using Perl. And they were being sued for breach of contract and, and they were basically accusing uh, my, me and my, my clients and by extension me of basically reusing their code and stealing and putting in a new project. And it was totally ridiculous, of course, because I wrote the thing in a totally different language. And uh, I couldn't make heads or tails what they were doing in, in Perl anyway. It was, it, was a, it was a mess. Anyway, so they called me in to see the lawyer. And, you know, and this, is a, this is not a small company. This, this company had, you know, you know, it wasn't a huge company, but they had many other companies under it. So they had their own lawyers and everything. So I went in to see the lawyers. To, you know, they wanted to take my statements and so on. So what, they wanted me to testify in court to say this software is not the same software. It's totally different. You know, I wrote the software. And so they're taking down my information. They say, okay, where'd you, where, 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 where'd you go to school? And I mentioned my university. You know, and they say, okay, uh, what, what degree did you get? I go, well, I said, well, I, didn't, I never graduated. They go, oh, well, you never graduated. Well, what were you studying? I said, uh, well, computer engineering, comp sci, computer science. I go, no, 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 psychology. And he went, whoa, 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 we got a problem here. And I go, what do you mean? He says, well, we can't put you on the stand as an expert witness because you're not technically an expert. And he go, well, I, I wrote the software. And he go, yeah, but you have to have a technical degree uh, to be an expert. That's just the way the system works. It doesn't matter that you built it. You're not an expert because you don't have the degree. So that's the ridiculous aspect of the story. Uh, though I have been programming for years, uh, self-taught all these languages, do all kinds of things, in the court of law uh, in, in, in Canada, that's where I am, and that's where I am, is in Canada, because I didn't have uh, the technical degree, I couldn't be acknowledged as an expert. So in that respect, Steve Jobs, uh, who doesn't have a technical degree, uh, 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 Bill Gates, who doesn't have a university degree, uh, they would not be considered experts. They couldn't, they couldn't testify because well, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't have a degree. And the big irony to all this is that, in fact, many times people come out of school, comp sci, computer science, or engineering, com computer, engineer, computer engineering degrees, there we go, they actually are, are not very good programmers. They probably just know a little bit. They're not very good at what they do. Well, comp sci, yeah, they're, they're more programmed, but they're still not very good because it takes experience. School is just the beginning of knowledge. School is just the beginning of knowledge. That's what a lot of academics don't understand. Where you really learn, uh, where you really cut your teeth, as they say, is in the field, is doing it. It's like uh, fighting. I used to box, and I was, I was a martial artist. I still am. For you know, 30 years now, I've been doing it since I was a little kid. And I could tell you, one street fight is worth you know, six, six months or so of training. A couple of ring fights you know, is worth you know, months and months of training. You learn so much actually doing something rather than sitting there and being an academic. And uh, you know, it goes back to something else. I remember back in the mid-90s, just in my early programming days, like 95 or 96, and I knew uh, JavaScript. It was the first language I actually learned was JavaScript. And it was a, it was a very new language at the time. And uh, I remember, theoretically, I was like a master because I had read a lot about it and, and, and I had done a lot of research on it and I read books. I found it fascinating. You know, I'm a geek. But I, had, I hadn't written much code. And so though people would ask me, so how do you do this in JavaScript? And I could tell you what function and, you know, even what the method signatures were and so on. But when I actually, I remember when I first sat down to actually write some JavaScript code for the first time, it was terribly difficult for me. 
<laughs> I still remember that it was a real hard time and I realized, wow, you don't really know anything until you do it. And, and it's, it's, just like, it's just like martial arts, just like business. You have to do it. So if you're learning web design, you're learning web programming, um, the best way to learn it is to do it. You have to do, you have to write code. That's why in our courses, you know, I'll emphasize, especially in my particular, the courses I create myself where I'm, the voicing, where I'm voicing them, I'm always telling people you should pause the video at times and you should write code, write code. And then when you get it to work, break it, break the code and see how, you know, how things react when the code is broken. You learn a lot by breaking code when it's working, after it's working. And this way, that's how you learn. That's how you learn. So going back to the ridiculousness, um, it relates to jobs and web programming, web design. If you're working for large multinationals, if you're going to go multinational corporations, big corporations, or if you're going to go work for government, unless you have lots and lots of experience, you're probably going to need some sort of degree or certificate because that's what they look for. But that's a very small percentage of the jobs out there. You know, that's what people got to understand. The vast majority of the jobs are working for small to medium-sized businesses. Those are the vast majority of the companies out there. So these guys, they couldn't give a rat's butt whether or not you have a degree. They're going to, they, they want to know what your experience is. They want to say, what have you done? Show us a portfolio in the, in the case of web designer. Show me some software you've written. And it's much more practical and pragmatic in the small to medium-sized uh, business world versus uh, large corporations or government where it, you know, it attracts a certain type of person whereas a lot of red tape and bureaucracy you got to contend with rather than uh, the meritocracy. And if you don't know what a meritocracy is, a meritocracy is a system where people advance based on their merits, based on their accomplishments, not based on who they know or based on pieces of paper that they get. So anyway, I hope uh, you found this video interesting and instructive and uh, there'll be more to come.